No matter what our kids and the new generation think about us, we are awesome. Our lives are living proof. To those of us born between 1925 and 1970 to all the kids WHO survived the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s and the 70s. First, we survived being born to mothers who may have smoked and or drank while they were pregnant. They took aspirin, ate blue cheese dressing, tuna from a can, and didn't get tested for diabetes. Then, after that trauma, we were put to sleep on our tummies in baby cribs covered with bright colored lead-based paints. We had no child-proof lids on medicine bottles, locks on doors or cabinets, and, when we rode our bikes, we had baseball caps, not helmets, on our heads. As infants and children, we would ride in cars with no car seats, no booster seats, no seat belts, no airbags, bald tires and sometimes no brakes. Riding in the back of a pickup truck on a warm day was always a special treat. We drank water from the garden hose, and not from a bottle. We shared one soft drink with four friends. From one bottle, and no one actually died from this. We ate cupcakes and white bread real butter and bacon. We drank Kool-Aid made with real white sugar and we weren't overweight. Why? Because we were always outside playing. That's why. We would leave home in the morning and play all day as long as we were back when the street lights came on. No one was able to reach us all day and we were okay. We would spend hours building our gockarts out of scraps and then ride them down the hill, only to find out we forgot the brakes after running into the bushes a few times we learned to solve the problem. We did not have PlayStations, Nintendos or boxes. there were no video games number 15, channels on cable, no video movies or DVDs, no surround sound or CDs, no cell phones, no personal computers, no internet, and no chat rooms. We had friends, and we went outside, and found them. We fell out of trees, got cut, broke bones and teeth and there were no lawsuits from those accidents. We would get spankings with wooden spoon switches, ping pong paddles or just a bare hand and no one would call child services to report abuse. We ate worms and mud pies made from dirt and the worms did not live in us forever. We were given BB guns for our 10th birthdays, made up games with sticks and tennis balls and although we were told it would happen we did not put out very many eyes. We rode bikes, or walked to a friend's house and knocked on the door, or rang the bell or just walked in and talked to them. Little League had tryouts, and not everyone made the team. Those who didn't had to learn to deal with disappointment imagine that the idea of a parent bailing us out if we broke the law was unheard of. They actually sided with the law. These generations have produced some of the best risk tickers, problem solvers and inventors ever. The past 50. 285 years have seen an explosion of innovation and new ideas. We had freedom, failure, success and responsibility, and we learned how to deal with it all. If you were one of those born between 1925 and 1970, congratulations. You might want to share this with others who have had the luck to grow up as kids before the lawyers and the government regulated so much of our lives for our own good. While you are at it forward it to your kids, so they will know how brave and lucky their parents were. Kind of makes you want to run through the house with scissors, doesn't it? Oh and here is a quote from Jay Leno. With hurricanes, tornadoes, fires out of control, mudslides, flooding, severe thunderstorms tearing up the country from one end to another, and with the threat of bird flu and terrorist attacks, are we sure this is a good time to take God and the Pledge of Allegiance out of our lives? For those that prefer to think that God is not watching over us, go ahead and delete this. For the rest of us, pass this on.